Mariah Rama. She's an analyst with the department. And um, we're very excited to hear from you each today. So with that, I would like to um, welcome our first speaker. There has been a change to the agenda. David Huerta was not able to make it today. And we have, but we do have a very exciting speaker, Mr. David Green, president of SEIU 721. David, if you'd like to come up. You're Hello, good afternoon, good to see you all. Uh, I don't think I need a microphone. Can you hear me okay? All right, great, great to see you all. Um, so I'm representing Davids, all the Davids in SEIU, so great to have you here. Um, my name is David Green, and I'm the president for SEIU Local 721, also the, the executive director, and I'm part of the International Executive Board for SEIU International as well. Um, SEIU 721 is one of the largest uh, unions in the entire country. We represent more than 100,000 members in Southern California. And I'm here to say that SEIU 721's tens of thousands of members strongly and overwhelmingly support establishing CalAccount, which will give all Californians access to a zero fee, zero penalty bank accounts. We can clap, that's okay, all right. <laughs> I'm excited about it, you know. Why are we doing this? Because the banking system doesn't work for far too many Californians. And as a children's social worker at LA County Department of Children and Family Services for almost 25 years, um, and as an SEIU leader, I've met dozens if not hundreds of Californians who lack basic uh, banking services that many of us take for granted. Uh, and unfortunately, this all disproportionately affects black and Latino communities who are much more likely to be unbanked or underbanked. And we feel that if the state is serious about addressing inequality, serious about keeping people from homelessness, or struggling to pay their bills, or feed their families, then we must prevent households from getting trapped in debt with big bank fees or penalties imposed by large banks and predatory lenders. So that's why I and tens of thousands of SEIU 721 members across Southern California support CalAccount. With zero fee, zero penalty bank accounts available to all California. Yeah, all right, all right. I'll say it again. <laughs> With zero fee, zero penalty bank accounts available to all Californians, the state can remove an unnecessary, unnecessary roadblock to financial stability for communities that have borne the brunt of generations of financial exclusion. And most importantly, it's the right thing to do. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, David. Appreciate your comments. Our next, next speaker is Trinity Tran, co-founder, Public Bank LA, California Public Banking Alliance. Trinity. <laughs> Labor leaders for joining us here today at the Cali Camp Downtown LA Town Hall. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. okay. And want to thank the Treasurer's Office and the DFPI, the Department of Financial Protection Innovation Agency, for, for hosting us today. So I want to take a few minutes to share why this program is important uh, from, from, uh, from us as, as public banking advocates and why it's also important for members of the public to get involved in this process, especially right now at this critical juncture. So at the end of 2021, Governor Newsom passed AB 1177, the California Public Banking Option Act. That bill is also known as CalAccount. So that bill created the CalAccount Blue Ribbon Commission, and that commission is tasked with writing the CalAccount market analysis. So that report will look at the costs, the, the, it will analyze the, the benefits and the feasibility of this program. And that is why it's so important that the consultants and the commission commissioners hear from the public, from members of the public about your experiences, your personal testimony about the harmful impact of the banking system and how that has impacted California's working families, how that's impacted LA communities. So your input will be critical in helping build the case for why California needs to create a CalAccount program to provide free banking access to all Californians 
regardless of your financial status, regardless of your immigration status. So this really is a, a first historic, but first in the nation program to provide universal banking access to, to all of our state's residents. So I want to just do an overview of, of the Cal account program. Um, should we slow the input? We need to record the sound for the newspaper. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Where, where do you want me? Yeah. Right here? Okay. Yeah, you might just like it. Right here. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a speaker there. Um, so I want to give a, a, an overview of the Cal Account program. Um, what is Cal Account? So Cal Account is a state-run digital platform that will provide all Californians with easy access to a, a basic checking account with debit card services. So anyone can open an account and be able to access a network of ATM and existing retail storefronts um, without any cost, without any penalties. All accounts are federally insured. So there are no costs to account holders. And as part of the program, or, uh, employers can set up and maintain payroll direct deposit and that way, that allows workers to participate in the program and, and do automatic bill payments and, and also receive state and local public benefits. So I, I do want to clarify, because this, this can be confusing, the difference between Cal account and public banks. So the bill that was passed was called the California Public Banking Option Act. So I just want to differentiate between public banking option and public banks. So while we are simultaneously working to create the Los Angeles Public Bank that is a city-owned bank that will leverage public funds, that's the fees, the revenues, the city accrues, leverage public funds to finance affordable housing and green energy and support socially beneficial projects. So while we're simultaneously working on that, and there's initiatives up and down the state of California from San Francisco to Oakland to Sacramento to create these city and region-owned public banks, that are owned by the people, that are accountable by the people. So while that effort is happening, this the Cal Account effort is, is separate from that. So Cal Account doesn't create a state bank. It doesn't create a new bank. It will work in collaboration with existing financial institutions. So it will work with community banks, potentially credit unions, and 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 tap into their existing network of ATMs and and retail storefront infrastructure to provide those zero costs, zero fee zero penalty bank accounts to all Californians. So uh, essentially you can see, woo! So essentially public banks will bank cities and Cal account will bank the public. And in a few years when, when public banks come online, like they can potentially hold Cal accounts, but the program is created as a public private partnership. And although it doesn't create a bank, it, it works um, in synergy with the public banking movement because it's about creating a public platform. It's a cre about creating universal banking access that everyone can access for free easily. So it works, so the, the public banking option and public banks both work in the same ecosystem because they're they're working to to bring in marginalized communities who have been excluded, who have been sidelined by the current banking system, and creating that that path towards um, equitable and and economic justice. So, just uh, on the note of financial justice, um, when we talk about financial justice, we we refer to two groups: the unbanked and the underbanked. So, the unbanked are individuals who don't have a bank account. They heavily rely on cash, uh, whether they don't trust the banks or whether they don't have minimum account balances. So that is the unbanked group. And then you have the underbanked groups are people who have a bank account, but they have inadequate access. So they have to rely on expensive, predatory financial services like check cashers and, 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 and uh, prepaid cards because those services don't require a credit check. They don't require minimum account balances. But if you need to cash a check, those check cashers take a huge portion of your pay, up to 12%. And then sometimes even more if it's for certain, for, for certain checks like payroll. So, you know, these high fees are, are impacting people who are already struggling financially. And then it also makes it very difficult to build a solid credit history. And, and this problem is especially significant with communities of color. Over 30% of black households are unbanked or underbanked. Over 30% of Latino and Latina households are unbanked and underbanked in California. And, and when you look at the, the national statistics about every year in the US, 
consumers are spending about $8 billion a year. That's what consumers are paying big banks and overdraft fees, $8 billion a year. And 80% of that $8 billion is coming from your, your, your poorest 9% of customers. So the poorest 9% of people are paying over 80% of overdraft fees. So, you know, that, these statistics really shine a light on the disparities that are faced by low-income communities and communities of color. And these are systemic barriers to economic stability and financial stability, and that's exactly what we are trying to work to, to lift. These are the barriers that we are trying to lift because everyone deserves a fair shot at financial stability and at growth, and we need to pave a path where working families can keep as much money in their pockets as possible. And why that's important, because when people are able to keep their money in their pockets instead of spending it on expensive bank fees and expensive bank interest. When people are able to keep their money in their pockets, that boosts the economy. So Cal account will help families, working families, especially low income families, save money in their pockets. And when you save money in your pockets, you have more to spend on goods and services. And when you have more to spend on goods and services, you st you're stimulating the economy and creating jobs. And a, there's a 2021 report that came out from HRNA advisors that points to exactly that. And it says they found that by redirecting spending away from bank interest and bank fees, so when you're helping families keep money in, in their pockets, that will result in, in the program would serve three and a half individual workers in California. It would result in $3.3 billion in savings for low income households. It would create 22,000 jobs and it would boost the econ California economy by over $4 billion. So creating financial inclusion will actually strengthen California economies and, and be able to empower California families. So these are some of the, the you know, the, there, these are some of the few of the many reasons why we need, a, we need public financial infrastructure and we need a, a protected, a safe pathway for millions of Californians. It, it's about roughly 8 million Californians who are unbanked and underbanked. So we need a pathway for them to be able to access their funds and be able to protect consumers from, from financial services that are predatory, that are discriminatory, that are costly. And you know we've got to level the playing field for everyone, and that starts by creating a, a public banking option platform that's accessible to everyone. So you are all a critical part of creating of, of, of the future of finance. And once Cal Account is launched, this will be the first state level public banking option platform to provide universal banking services to all state residents. So as public banking advocates, what we are ultimately working to do is to tr transform banking into a public utility as it should be free and accessible to all and that will be a game changer, especially for marginalized communities and for people who have been far too long uh, victimized uh, by the banking system. So I want to thank all of you for showing up. I want to thank the treasurer's office and all the community leaders in the house, SEIU 7 to 1, ACE, Ground Game. Thank you, everyone, for joining today and sharing your, your input in this very critical program. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Trinity, for your comments today. Up next, our last guest speaker, Luz Castro, Policy Associate Director, Policy and Legal Strategy and Inclusive Action. Luz. Hi, good afternoon. Muy buenas tardes. Can you hear me? All right. Perfect. Hi, my name is Luz Castro. I'm the Associate uh, Director of Policy at Inclusive Action for the City. We're an economic justice organization and a community development financial institution, mostly known as the CDFI. And we work, um, we're based out of Boyle Heights, but we work with LA County residents and beyond. Our mission is to enhance access to transformative capital and advocate for just and fair economic policies at both the local level and the state level. We work to eliminate barriers, for economic opportunity, particularly for low-income people, people of color, and immigrant families who are often denied formal and traditional 
financial systems. And allow me to paint a picture of some of our work and some of the obstacles that our community faces. Imagine that you have a dream of having your own business, but several factors in your life, oftentimes due to circumstances that are out of your control, lock you out of the traditional banking system. What do you do when that happens? Do you put your dream on hold? At Inclusive Action, we say no. And instead, we help open those doors for community members that we work with. I'm here to express um, Inclusive Action's strong support for an inclusive and accessible Cal account implementation. It is long overdue to provide a stable financial platform for unbanked and underbanked Californians. At Inclusive Action, we have the privilege of working with hundreds of small business owners, entrepreneurs, street vendors that come into our office every single day seeking support for financial systems that they don't have. Through one-on-one -on -one consultations, we offer both English and Spanish uh, resources, and we collaborate with them to develop systems that are supportive um, and systems tailored to their specific needs. Well, yes, we have had the privilege of working with many entrepreneurs and supporting them in their pathway to from micro business owners to small business owners. We've also encountered many challenges in adapting systems to their needs due to their difficulties access, accessing traditional banking services. Whether unbanked or choosing to forego traditional banks, our community members and clients have shared their reasons for those decisions. Because of their immigration status, many of them are ineligible to open a bank account. Our community members um, have also shared that there are high banking fees that they can't keep up with, withdrawal limits that don't work for them or their business, and our youngest clients, the Gen Zers, they face barriers when it comes to lending and banking accounts. Instead, they're having to work with other fintech platforms like Cash App um, that op or operating and only in cash, which causes challenges with managing, accessing, receiving, or saving funds for the younger generation. Given, given these obstacles, it's crucial that CalAccount goes beyond being just another bank. It must instead be a program specifically crafted for the unbanked and the underbanked communities. CalAccount really does have the opportunity to represent a crucial initial stride in assisting hundreds of thousands of families throughout the state of California and in ensuring full economic integration of our community, regardless of your income, regardless of your socioeconomic background, your immigration status. This will also provide a roadmap to financial stability and establishing a robust financial safety net. This is particularly important for the undocumented population who face significantly challenges. So allow me to share some insights when it comes to the undocumented population, uh, when it comes with working with financial systems. As you may be aware, in the United States, there's 10.5 million undocumented people that live in this country without a pathway to citizenship. In California, which is the state that has the highest number of undocumented people, there are 2 million residents here that are living here undocumented without access to a green card. They contribute billions of dollars annually into federal, state, and local taxes. They fortify the state's financial infrastructure. Yet despite their contributions to the economy, undocumented immigrants don't have access to the federal programs that are available to those that are U.S. citizens or green card holders. And with that, they don't have access to tools that can help them build wealth, and oftentimes they're forced to engage in informal saving methods, such as setting aside cash or utilizing community-based informal savings networks, oftentimes called tandas or cundinas um, in the Latino community, right? And immigrants in general have a difficult time building wealth due to a number of reasons, like their experiences with lower wages, job insecurity, limit, limited access to financial services and literacy, all of which are barriers that prevent them from achieving economic integration in this country. 
Um, as, the, as the state considers Cal account implementation, we urge you to consider the unique challenges undocumented communities face in accessing our existing financial systems. And I particularly want to um, mention ITINs because ITINs are an important tool that a lot of our immigrant communities use, right? And while ITINs are available to all immigrants, regardless of your immigration status, many of our immigrant communities decide not to pursue ITINs for various reasons, fear of deportation, language barriers, not understanding how the system works. Therefore, we ask that the state make Cal account accessible to everyone by providing alternate opportunities for identification, like accepting foreign passports, matricula consulares, or other government issued IDs. And like I said before, Cal account is a necessary step forward that provides unique opportunities for those that are unbanked and underbanked to have access to the banking system. And inclusive action fully supports this effort, and we believe that embracing a holistic approach to financial inclusion has the potential to empower hundreds of thousands of families in this country, regardless of their immigration status, regardless of their socioeconomic background. And we believe that Cal Account will and can create an inclusive, accountable, and just economic system for California. Thank you. Thank you for this invitation. Um, uh, one individual made me aware of this and I'm so grateful for it. My name is Jay Miller. I'm with the Inland SoCal Bank on Coalition, which is sponsored by the Inland SoCal Housing Collective. And I'm here today representing a significant region of our state as large and populous as a state like Tennessee with nearly 5 million people and over 27,000 square miles. This region has a large underserved minority population, but sadly, it has been repeatedly overlooked by commercial, philanthropic, and government entities, including the state. However, the Inland Empire continues to be one of the fastest growing areas in the state and the nation, and is comprised of San Bernardino, and Riverside counties. And just a little background for myself, I've uh, spent a number of years in various roles with uh, different types of transaction processing systems, with helping families make financial decisions, and my broken, poor, not very good Spanish still makes a difference with many people. I have them come into my office and sit down at my table. The children, they're tracking with me just fine, but the parents are not smiling. Their arms are crossed. They're very nervous. And when I notice that, I begin to converse with them in their own native language as best as I can. And I notice them relax and breathe and open up and begin to laugh and we actually have a conversation then about what it is they want for their families and what it is that they want for their future for themselves and uh, one little tidbit that I learned is that while all of the words in English in all of our nice brochures that we present and all of our presentations do not translate very well. In fact, some words that look like they translate are completely different. The numbers do translate. You don't need any translation for the numbers. And most of the numbers look big and scary to people. And that's why they stop talking to banks or talking to anybody about their finances and just go to find somebody that will help them. So my reason for being here is to address the Cal account proposal that has grown out of an ongoing frustration with the speed of change in our state's financial industry, an industry that has only a few decades before was called out for discriminatory practices focused on maintaining separation between races and social classes within our communities. 
Fortunately, for several decades, California has been a leader in national efforts to bring about change that have improved the financial choices for a large segment of our population who have been using alternative financial services with very high fees for cashing checks and making payday loans. Um, the Bank On initiative, which I am working with, was started right here in our state in San Francisco in 2006 and then moved across the state in 2008 and finally spread to the rest of the nation shortly afterward. It's very similar to the Cal account, but Cal account does have some improvements on it. And as with any new effort, there have been challenges, but the momentum is building in recent years and improved data collection is available now. And um, now California has another opportunity to continue to establish a new uh, way to make a difference in our communities, the proposed Cal account. But despite the success that, uh, that we've seen with the bank on accounts, there's still only about 10 to 20 percent of the need being met after many years and a lot of effort on many people's parts, from nonprofits, from cities and counties, from bank uh, organizations. Um, and unfortunately, in uh, August 2021, there's a report from the State Department of Financial Protection and Innovation that shows that none of the 10 bank on programs sponsored by our state had been focused on the Inland Empire, one of our largest regions. And despite this oversight, our two county region has been working with the national bank on organization and brought me in late last year to ramp up our efforts to better meet the financial needs of nearly a million people uh, still using high cost alternative banking services. Currently data from 2022 is showing that 209,306 accounts are active as of the end of that year and uh, they were opened and it's nearly 15% of the state's total uh, bank on accounts. And these are very similar, um, not quite as good, but very similar to the Cal accounts that are being proposed. In our region, we have over 400 banks and credit unions, uh, branches all around the area, giving access to these types of accounts, but there's still challenges. One of the largest challenges for attracting individuals using alternative financial services is that they find the personal contact in these offices very important to them. And this is something that um, they are much less likely to find at any credit union or bank or any organization. That personal contact is so important to them. And customers cite friendly, relatable personnel and the nearby small welcoming locations as reasons that they continue to frequent these high cost alternatives. And um, they're close to their homes and uh, they lack access to better services close to them. They lack the language access. And so it's caused these high fee services to come in and fill the vacuum that has been left in certain regions in certain neighborhoods and pockets. And probably the biggest concern, however, is how to overcome the challenges of that our minority community faces when trying to access these low cost bank accounts as shown in the Roosevelt Institute report. Another bank on region in Denver uh, one of the oldest in the nation uh, shared some of their approaches and their history in helping people switch from uh, high fee services to uh, low cost, uh, more, more traditional bank accounts. And one of the ways is at the point of need, at the point of service, uh, whether it's uh, foster youth coming out of a foster, uh, aging out of the foster system, or uh, justice involved, just being released from a justice system. We have someone from a nonprofit organization making a connection with them. And he said, it's really simple. Just write down the name of the account, the name of the person, the name of the, the location for the branch and make an appointment for them and then send them with that piece of paper 
to that location. And uh, banks and uh, credit unions uh, freely admit that they have high turnover with their frontline personnel and it's very challenging for them to get them trained in all of the different ins and outs of all these different types of accounts, including the low fee accounts. So as a result, they suggest that clients do make an appointment um, rather than walking in as uh, was used in the study. And I'll just wrap up here. Um, our inland SoCal Bank on Region is developing other tools to help. We'll have an interactive map. We have a matrix showing all the different accounts that are available, and I'm sure we'll be adding the Cal account to that list of accounts. And uh, the collection of data now shows progress. And uh, you can see this at uh, the website joinbankon.org forward slash bond hub data. It's available to the public. You can see data of people accessing low fee accounts. And in conclusion, I applaud the state for continuing efforts to improve banking access for all of our vulnerable populations around the state. And I want to be sure that our region, Inland SoCal, in San Bernardino and Riverside counties are not overlooked and have access to a fee-free, penalty-free account like the Cal account. It would really help our people in the Inland Empire as well as all over the state. So thank you. So um, my name is Toya Vick, and I am a participatory defense organizer, criminal and housing justice advocate, a Salis Policy Institute fellow, and just a woman of many hats. We aim to eradicate poverty and in incarceration, and in their place, create communities that of care that support self-determination and keeps families together and safe. I am here to be the voice of the voiceless, the arms and the legs of our seniors and disabled, and a heart for the children, representing the underserved communities of formerly incarcerated individuals and those I just mentioned uh, uh, before, as well as our low-income families. Having access to bank accounts plays a significant role in supporting the successful integration of formerly incarcerated individuals into society by facilitating financial stability and access to essential services and resources. Formerly incarcerated individuals often lack the type of identification transitional banks require when opening a banking account or establishing a line of credit, such as a secured credit card, you know? Since banks do not accept federal prison IDs as valid identification, formerly incarcerated individuals are totally, entirely shut out of the financial services at a time when they need it the most. When our community members are able to open bank accounts, they are hit with a, um, account maintenance fees, overdraft, and other junk fees that takes more and more of the hard-earned money and government benefits. These fees can sometimes double or increase. The longer their account is negative, the lending to members having close having them to close their accounts, miss important payments of their bills, payments, and further, um, I'm sorry, getting bleary, need my glasses. <laughs> um, and it interrupts their lives, destabilize their lives. In some communities in the Inland Empire, access to banks and in-network ATMs are limited, leading our community members many of who are seniors and disabled to have to travel over 10 to 20 miles just to access an ATM. They have limited access to public transportation, nor is there pro um, proper lighting for safety and stability just to access basic financial services. The, their choices are to go to outside network ATMs, and those fees can range from anywhere from $3.50 to $8 per transaction. Um, so having a free debt 
account, such as Cal account, would support the underserved communities of formerly incarcerated individuals, seniors, disabled, and our low-income families by reestablishing trust within the community members and banking with banks, bringing empowerment to those who are seeking check, um, checking accounts, bank accounts, um, saving accounts, and becoming homeowners, and as we all have heard earlier, building lines of credit, opening uh, college accounts for their children, and um, building financial wealth. Supporting customers to have access to automatic online banking, um, which, pro which also can provide convenient, accessible, um, accessible, and safe locations to their finances. So thank you for your time. Greatly appreciate it. Hello everyone. Um, can you hear me? Uh, my name is Envy, and I need you to speak louder. Okay, great. Um, the podium is. I hope you can see me as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Envy Kim, and uh, I was born here in LA, um, and coming back in ten years. I also work down the street at a, a community bank that's headquartered here. Um, most of our uh, clients, uh, customers that we serve are uh, from immigrant communities, from our folks of color, um, people of color. And um, whenever I'm in a room like this, I think about, uh, with all due respect to you lovely people, I think about the people who aren't in the room, um, who weren't able to make this meeting. Um, those are the folks who are probably working really hard right now to make ends meet. Those are probably the folks who are underbanked or unbanked, right? Um, and um, I wanted to provide some perspective on, uh, from like a banker's perspective as well, because um, my, I'm an analyst and my job is to look over um, transactions every day um, to detect uh, fraudulent activity or, um, or tax evasion. And that's a big concern from an institu institutional standpoint. But actually the reality is, um, the reality is that most of the activity that we do see aren't from people who are trying to build wealth, um, who are trying to make ends meet. Um, a lot of uh, the customers that we do see who um, uh, have a very different reality than the folks who are working really hard. Um, and um, like I said, I'm coming back to LA in 10 years and it's become really different. It's become kind of heartbreaking for me to see, you know, a lot of houseless people, a lot of people who are really working hard just to have a roof over their head, uh, just to provide meals for their families. Um, and those folks are the ones who need to be banked. Um, and um, I also see a lot of barriers from uh, a traditional banking perspective and would love to see um, folks who um, are in my community that overlaps, I have a lot of overlap in my communities, who don't trust banks enough to put their money to, you know, save money with banks. Um, and I hope that, you know, a platform like Cal Account and public banking will remedy that situation where people are able to trust banks again to you know, help protect their wealth and build generational wealth um, for, for futures, for, for children uh, to come. Um, yeah, thank you for this time and thank you for letting me speak. Hi, I'm Andy Winnick, professionally an uh, economist, part of Cal State LA for many years, et cetera, et cetera. I want to make a comment on a few things. One, if people do not have a bank account, they have a problem. We've, we've discovered that over and over and over again. They have to be pay, paid in cash, or they have to get a check and pay 8, 10, 12, 15% of their money in, into, the, into the account. Then they get a cash for it, but that's a safety measure. That can be stolen. That, can be, that, that is a, a serious limitation. There's a time dimension to not having, having a bank account. You, you may get paid on a daily basis, a weekly basis, whatever, but you have things like rent that are on a monthly basis. You have to save the money. So where do you keep the money that's safe, that you, it's not going to get stolen? It's a, it's, a it's a serious issue. 
Underbanking, as has been mentioned, affects more than 8 million people, which is about 20% of the, of the population of California. Resident, non-resident, doesn't matter in terms of uh, uh, document, document stand, status. If you're underbanked, it means you're basically paying major, major fees to do anything you need, you need to do with, with the banking system. You have a problem in general with a, a separate issue, obviously, of discrimination. We have all sorts of statistical studies which have shown that the negative banking impacts un, totally unproportionately affect black, Hispanic immigrants and also single mothers are, are also an, another group that are seriously discriminated against within the banking system. Cal accounts would cover all of these people and provide a guaranteed banking system. There's another problem which hasn't been mentioned, which is wealth accumulation. If without the, the major form of wealth accumulation in the United States is owning a home. That's how most families create, create wealth. Today, even the middle class, the children of the middle class, Gen Z, cannot afford the down payments to get a house. So what the, what the middle class is doing is borrowing money on their houses to lend to the kids for the down payment to get them into a, their first home. Without that ability to do that sort of, that sort of process, the kids will never, will never own a house, even if the parents do. So there's a whole problem there. The wealth, the wealth accumulation is essential over the over generations to guarantee you know, an adequate standard, standard of living. There's a safety issue which I just want to emphasize one more time. We, what we found when when during the the recession and what have you, and and during the COVID and all the rest of it, is you want to send welfare checks or PPP checks for the people who are getting salary replacements or other checks to people. The middle class, most white pay people, get it deposited directly into their account. The money's available, they can take it out if and when they need it, they can you know, borrow against it, it's there. We try to get checks to other people who don't have the bank accounts, they have no way of cashing it. So they end up losing right off the top of whatever payment they're getting, salary, welfare, social security, they lose 10, 12, 14% of their money before they even see it. Total, totally unfair. And then, as I said, when they get the money, they're stuck with how do you keep it safe? And that's a serious problem. We've got over 50,000 people in the LA area who are unhoused. They are really vulnerable to basically safety issues in terms of any money they happen to have. If they had a, put, put a money in a bank account, if they had a debit card, you know, with code numbers and all the usual stuff, then they, they could be safe and we could get money to them when we needed to and they could get their own earnings safely and use it. So Cal accounts is absolutely essential. We basically do not have a functioning society with all of our people when we have 30%, you know, 20%, 30, 30, over 30% 30 of the minority communities without banking. This is not a just society, and we need to correct that. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Mashika, and I'm here today in support of Cal Account um, because basically this is not only just essential to California, it's essential to everyone across the United States. Everyone is struggling. Not everyone is able to have a bank account or have like a proper credit score in order to maintain a bank account. And so with Cal account, it, it will basically be there for everyone so that we all have an opportunity to win and to take care of our families and for our children. And just like she said, just like for generations to come, like, like we're we're doing we're making like a lot of big changes in California, but we're gonna continue and we're gonna make more changes. And this Cal account is one way that we can help excite change, and we can show other states, hey, you know, like we're we're starting here, but you guys can do it too, because this is something that's not only needed in California, but this is something that we need all over. The United States. 
And this is something that other people need in other countries and things like that. But if we can be the model for that, let's be the model. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just like, but we have to start somewhere. So let's start here in our own space, with our own families, within our own communities. Let's start. And as soon as you start, other people take notice. And they pay attention and they're just like, well, why don't we have that there? And they're just like, well, wait a minute. No, we need that too. Let's adapt that change. So it's like here in California, we're, we're putting like a small footprint down, but it's gonna be a big one to impact everybody else. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, Good my, afternoon. Hi, and my name is Emily, and I support Cal Account program because I am a refugee. I came to this country as a student and had no social security card at the time, which meant I couldn't obtain a checking account. Um, every time my mother sent me money, she was charged fees, uh, you know, sending through Western Union or MoneyGram. That's what usually immigrants use. And um, to pick up the money, I also had, like, depending on exchange rate, it would change. And, um, you know, or even when I had to cash a check, also that was expensive with the fees. So uh, for students, every transaction of, it, I'm not talking about monthly charge. I'm trying to talk about every transaction it's like over twenty dollars being charged imagine that how much money is that for a student right and so cal account would have helped my mother who was a nurse who worked long long nights to earn every penny to pay for my education instead of corporate banks who were stealing high interest rates from her um, thank you for helping change the future for many students for generations to come. Please support Cal account for hardworking Californians. I do believe it will boost economy in California because people will have more freedom to bank and spend more money, right? Who doesn't love that? Thank you so much.